M1 Global presents. Aziz dostlar, gecemiz devam edir və mən bir daha elan etmək istərdim ki, bir qədər sonra gecənin döyüşü olacaq Azərbaycanın tanınmış EMA idvançısı titulumuz Ehtiqat Atakişivin görüş keçiləcək. Bir qədər sonra, hələli isə, aziz dostlar, yüngül çəkidə M1 Challenge titul uğrunda, çempion titul uğrunda görüş başlayır. Предоставилась возможность мне в очередной раз сражаться за титул в данной организации. В далеком 2011 году у меня уже был шанс, я его реализовал, стал чемпионом М1. Каждый, наверное, спортсмен хотел чемпионский пояс получить, и я всегда об этом мечтал. Некоторые бои предлагали мне, я ездил, дрался. Хотелось в этом спорте чего-то добиться. Я как бы жил спортом и сейчас живу спортом. Я всегда мысленно в спорте. Волевой три раунда смотрю, как этот он, как дизель такой. В одном и том же темпе, в одном обороте работает, пашет. Артем Домковский очень волевой отличается своим характером. Его сильные стороны – это ударная техника, защита от проходов. И всегда он забирал именно своим характером поединки все. Но мне есть, что ему противопоставить. У меня очень большой опыт. Самое главное, что я уверен в своей победе. Думал, если выиграют, то, возможно, завяжу уже как бы с карьерой. А с другой стороны, бросаться словами, а вдруг не завяжу, вдруг опять потянет. Проиграю, вдруг, наоборот, разозлюсь и обратно начну готовиться. Но если выиграю, сто процентов придется, черт, блин, отстаивать. Просто так не свалишь. Артем, я слишком долго ждал этого шанса. Но ты стоишь у меня на пути. И пояс я заберу с собой. Сань, удачи нам обоим в бою. Победить сильнейший. Кто бы не был победителем, жму руку. Удачи нам в бою. Эзис Дослар, Белейля. Эмбер Челен, Жигюль Чекида. Чемпион титул угрунда. Кюриш Пашлыр. Бейш раунд. Göykücə dəvət olur. Tanındığınız və ekranlardan izlədiyiniz idmançı Artom Domkovski. Artyom 
Bak gördüğünüz bu kemer uğrunda en bir çölen çöpüm kemer uğrunda mübariz yaparır. İndi ise kırmızı küçüde mübariz yaparacak. Elvacı davet olur. Alkışlarınızla kırmızı küçüde mübariz yaparacak. Alexander Butenko. Ladies and gentlemen, this is five rounds of action for the M1 Challenge lightweight title. Now introducing your fighter in the blue corner. This fighter is 32 years old. He weighed in at 70.3 kilograms. He stands 173 centimeters tall and has a record of 20 wins and nine losses. He is silver medalist of World Universal Combat Championship, International Master of Sports in Kudo, M1 selection, Eastern European winner and former M1 lightweight champion from Academy MMA Belarus, Artem Tamkowski. <laughs> now welcome his opponents in the red corner. This fighter is 29 years old. He weighed in at 70.3 kilograms. He stands 180 centimeters tall and has a record of 40 wins, 11 losses with two draws. He is the Jiu Jitsu black belt, master of sports in combat sambo and winner of the multiple international MMA and grappling events from Fight Spirit Russia, Alexander Bushtenko. And your referee for this bout is Marco Bruce. Blue corner, center of the rage. Championship bout, five rounds, five minutes. You both know the rules. Listen to my command. Protect yourself all time. Make it a good bout. Shake hands. Back to your <laughs> Judge. Judge. Judge, time ready, contender ready, change you ready. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the M1 Challenge 67 main event of the evening in the blue corner, Artyom Damkowski in the red corner, Alexander Butenko, and this is a fight for the vacant lightweight title. Expect fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen a boring, slow fight from either one of these two guys. Butenko shoots in, and a takedown. Oh, oh, oh, oh. Thunderous takedown, too. Really landed him on the ground there. And both these fighters have a wealth of experience, Ian, a wealth of experience, particularly Butenko, who has well over 50 fights, 53 fights in total action. He's Korean, easily the most experienced fighter on the entire card. And while he's only 28, the Ukrainian has already assembled wins over a ton of fantastic prospects and a ton of fantastic fighters over his career wins and losses wise he's done really well for himself and eventually even though he had never fought for the title before he was always the bridesmaid never the bride now he's finally found himself into position after a contract dispute occurred between m1 global and mansoor barnawi well he, he deserves a shot to be honest he's, like i say he's, he's one of the most decorated fighters on the card you know, he, he's wanted this title for a long time and now he's going to prove to everybody why he should get it. You know, he's got an immediate takedown, beautiful pass to side control. That was slick. He's a submission specialist and a very capable striker at the same time. He's already 7-1 under the M1 banner dating back to 2009. Artem Demkovsky, on the other hand, that's a name we haven't heard properly for a long time, considering he used to be a former M1 Global lightweight champion. Seems to be taking MMA seriously again. L really, really value this opportunity that was given to him. Originally, it was supposed to be him against Mansoor Barnawi, but he's more than happy to do the same thing again against Butenko. Butenko looking for a crucifix, it seems. Yeah, he stepped over halfway. He actually knocked the face of Artem, and Artem looked up at the referee. It wasn't intentional, but Artem trying to regard now. I'm sure Artem Damkowski will be ra rather happy to be on his feet than be down here. Certainly. You know, he is an awesome striker. He's got some thunder. I am suppose that's why Alexander Butenko took him straight down. Indeed. Artem fought for M1 Global 16 different occasions dating back to 2007. So both these guys are veterans with the promotion, really, at the end of the day. This is a fight between two veterans. 
to determine who is the next person to reign as M1 Global's lightweight champion. Well, Batengo's got great control inside, but to be honest, D Damkowski, you've got to you've got to take your hat off to him because he's not allowing Batengo to, to to pull off any shots. He's moving constantly, short little hammer fist there. Well, there's experience on both ends there, really. And I mean, Damkowski's been in this sort of position time and time again. He knows what it feels like to grind out to win. He knows what it means to win quickly and to win emphatically. <laughs> but see, have you noticed that? They're constantly going around in a circle. That's because Dan Cosby is, is constantly trying to move all the time and to try and keep him still. Vitenko is, you know, they're going around in a circle. Now, if Dan Cosby wasn't trying to move, they would be still. They would be just flat in the back in one position. So either Pashenko has got to, got to go to north south or he's got to climb on the mount because he's going to keep on circling and the punches are not going to be very strong. That was a nice shot to the stomach though, that softened him up a little bit. Okay, then Kopski's taking more punches than he'd prefer here in this opening round. With just a little under 90 seconds to go. Oh, First. great work, great work. Woho takes the back early. Take Whoa, the then Kopski rolls down. Still in the same position though. Oh, Botenko's looking for a slam! Nicely done. Straight in the side control again. It feels like Botenko with each throw is trying to drill Demkovsky's back through the canvas instead of just onto the canvas. 45 seconds left in this first of a potential five, five minute round. There's the knee ride over to Mount. Oh, gets well, the back instead. That was a good decision to do because there's only 30 seconds left. And even if Damkowski manages to throw him off the mount, he would only be on the ground for a short time. That just shows an experience of Potenko. He's going for the arm. With 15 seconds left, he's best to ride this out and just earn the 10-9 scorecard for the first round. Yeah, I think he's earned that anyhow, even if... Even if he gets dismounted, he's earned the 10 9. Oh, oh, oh. Well, an easy round for Potenko. Dominating from nearly four and a half minutes, maybe longer. Indeed, pretty one sided so far, Ian. But Demkowski is always full of tricks up his sleeve. Losing one round only means he's going to try something different and cunning in the second round. Just let out a big yell. Another one actually right there. Third one, trying to probably hype himself up. Well, he'd not be happy with being on his back for such a long time. You know, it wasn't just a couple of minutes. It was like, you know, four and a half minutes of the round. But to be honest... I rarely see fighters yell like that. I'm looking at Batenko. He's, he's leaning over the, the bucket, breathing heavy. He is carrying a lot of muscle mass. He's never been the best with endurance. It's been his weakness over time. And I just wonder if he's prepared to go five rounds with a fighter who has gone five rounds before. Oh, I think he was going to skip in with a knee and just mistimed it. A little tentative here in the second round. Yeah, well, this is a big, big fight for Patenko. The feeling out process here for both of them. Damkowski. See that Damkowski seems throwing that uppercut. That's basically saying, if you shoot in, this is what's going to happen. So he's basically telling him not to shoot. But if you do, you're going to get hurt. Always leave, your, of it. always leave your opponent thinking of what's going to happen. What if? What if? Yeah, if you shoot in, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get the uppercut. Damkowski's looking fresh. Certainly the fresher of the two here. But the more he lets Butenko just stand there, the more Butenko can just breathe and try and rest up a little bit. He's not moving enough. 
Nice inside. It was. Nice angles, moving side to side. Oh, nice. So that's give the tank a chance to clinch. Oh, he gets a nice takedown. Beautiful work. We've seen how strong he is on side control. Pulls his arm out. He's trying to trap. Damkowski's arm to get a crucifix. Hammer fist. This is where Butenko wants to be and Artem does not look happy at all. He was doing so well now, but it's going to be a little over half of the round that Butenko has here to maintain this position or to advance it in some way. Got knee and belly. Going to slide over to Mount again. Remember, he took the back. The great work. Damkowski's nearly up. And Vyshenko, will he pick up and slam like he did in round one? But well, Damkowski put his hands on the floor. That means he cannot be kneed in the face if he puts a hand down. Three point position. He can be punched like that, but he can't be kneed if he's got a hand down. He was faking the rule there. <laughs> oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. Butenko's got to be careful. That stuff takes out a lot of energy, yeah. and it has not been effective there. Look at Damkowski's balance. Oh, beautiful work by Damkowski. Very impressive. The crowd's cheering that one on. That was good work from him there. But Botenko finally drives him down there. Took a while, but he got the position he wanted. Yeah, not a good sign when Damkowski puts his head flat in the canvas. Whether he's disheartened or whether he's tired, I'm not sure. Watch for the up kicks. Good posturing up to land those shots. Well, Dan Kofsky got good wrist control. Normally, what you would do if somebody got wrist control like that is throw an elbow over the top. But as we know in M1, there's no elbows allowed here. Exactly. Oh, nice. Chopping low kick. Oh, there's that uppercut. Very nice. That's exactly what he told him he was going to do if he shoots in. Damkowski moves well, doesn't he? His angles he are good. I like that he's taking out Butenko's lead leg as well. Oh, he's cut. He's cut. That's not good. I don't know how that could happen, but it wasn't a punch. Damkowski is cut over the right eye. I don't know if the that clash is the heads on the way in. Position to be cut as well. Hopefully, we could see it on the replay. It might have been when he tried to throw that Superman punch and move in hard. He got caught. Might be mistaken, Ian, but didn't we see a fight get called off last week because of a cut early in the fight? Yeah, we did. Yes, it, it, it happens, and that, that, that is the fight game. Here we go. Hard to see. Still very difficult to tell here. I think it was near the end of the round when he threw a Superman punch. And I think he may have went a little bit too far forward and headbutted by mistake on his eye. There we go. Boom. That was it. That was it. I thought I was right. He hit the back yeah, of his and head. He immediately starts gushing out blood. The doctor appears to be applying Vaseline. The fight seems to be going on. Yeah, we're good. We're good. 
But now Patenko, he's going to aim for that. Exactly. A a any, any fight in the right mind is going to try and make that cut bigger. Exactly. And that's when it becomes questionable. And to be honest, it wasn't Patenko's oh, fault why it happened. Oh, you can sense the urgency now. Domkovsky, if he doesn't finish this fight, he knows. Oh! oh! Takes out his lead leg! What a chopping leg kick. He timed it business. beautifully as well there. Demkovsky was once yeah, upon a time one of, the most, one of the most exciting fighters in Russian MMA once upon a time when he reigned as champion. Nice knee to the body. Shot in, but strong. Oh, oh nice left, done. Oh, oh, he punched punch the left hand. He's rolling back the clock here. We're seeing the Demkovsky of old. And oh, oh no! down. Crowd is going wild. You think Demkovsky was from Azerbaijan? Well, we know Patenko does have submissions in his arsenal, so Demkovsky has to be careful. He stands back uh -huh. wisely as well. Wisely done. But that cut. It's going to be in C closely, and see, look at the ring, that cut's not looking good at all. Referee Marco Brunson keeping an eye on it as well. Yeah, Damkowski does not want to be against the cage. Oh, he's got a guillotine. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's got a guillotine. Kuchenko trying to pass the guard. That'll ease the guillotine a bit, but no, he's not. He hasn't got it on. He's only got one hand. And he lets go now. Now he's going to work on that cut. And the cut's already opened again. You can see it dripping blood. And yeah, Botenko turns his head, turns for the right right side. Oh, he's mounted. He mounts he's now. mounted. Well, Damkowski wisely turns his back, but he's got caught in a body lock. And I say wisely because if he got mounted and then punched in that cut, it would just spit wide open more. So he turns his back to try and give himself a little bit of saving grace. Can't tell from here, but it's oh no, it's not under. I was gonna ask if that was under the chin, but it doesn't appear to be so yet. A little over half the round left to go, ladies and gentlemen. Not a good position for Damkowski, especially with the body lock. But an exciting It's not round impossible indeed. to escape a body lock, but it's it's it's really really hard. It's a grueling position. It's a grueling too. It, it makes your breathing a little more difficult. Exactly. And you can see Patenko's pushing his hips down to try and get his opponent flat. Oh, and he. I'd be surprised if he shakes him off. Indeed. That's locked in tight there, you can see it. Well, Dan Kuski's wisely keeping hold of the right arm of Patenko so that he can't use his right arm to hit that cut. Uh -oh, he's, he's trying to grab it again. Let go. Oh, he's trying to protect the cut. It, yeah. His fight IQ is admirable. To be honest, he's still focused, still aware, even though he's getting hit, he still knows what he needs to do to stay in this fight. Well, 90 seconds left to go. Damkowski, who came back with a thunderous start, having been cut. Oh, there's blood everywhere now. The thing is, that is not good for Damkowski in the sense that it will be easier to slip the arm under the neck. The more blood, the easier it is to apply that submission. It will slide under the neck a lot easier. Damkowski put his head underneath the armpit to try and hide that eye. But well, it's that body lock what's keeping him there. Patenko is not going to let go this easy. 40 seconds left to go. Damkowski will be pleased just to see the round out now, I think. Well, 20 seconds. Damkowski Definitely another round surviving. for Patenko here. Dan Kosky started off. We thought he was going to finish the Indeed. way he came out thunderous. But it just shows the ground game of Patenko. 
He's in a class of his own when it comes to ground. Absolutely vicious there. Here we go. We're about to head into the championship rounds, and Butenko <laughs> slowly getting back to his feet to come back to the corner. His breathing seems to be okay. And wow, is the crowd roaring in approval for Demkovsky. They like his resilience. They to like be honest, his style. when he came in the ring, they didn't really see him much. When I announced the Belarus fighter, you know, he got a few round of applause. And then I, uh, I said the Russian fighter, he got more round of applause than than Damkowski, but now I think the tide has turned. It's Everyone's good, rooting yeah. for the underdog now, the guy that's cut. There's another scream from Damkowski. You'd think he'd want to conserve as much energy as possible Some, at this point, sometimes, but maybe... Sometimes, yeah, martial artists like a, you know, it's like their, their, their chi. Yeah. You know, it gives them that little urge, that little boost, little scream before you do it. If it helps him perform, the way he did in the beginning of that third round. Tank was on his feet already, walking around. He's about to hit the championship round for the first time in his M1 tenure. Crowd is roaring in approval here. Well, like you say, championship rounds, round four. Been a grueling fight thus far. I think Patenko has just taken the lead. But relentless with the takedown. He's got his hands clapped at the back. That normally means it's a takedown. Yes, it is. Damkowski's trying to breathe through it, but no. on his back now tucked up in the corner too with his head up against the post unless Damkowski escapes really fast and hard which is going to take up a lot of energy Patenko is just going to keep him down here Patenko's ground is just too good Damkowski will have to pull it out the bag he will have to go super fast super quick and escape certainly will there's that slick guard pass again Yeah, Damkowski's flat, shoulders are flat, head is flat. Not a good sign. Could use the, the bottom of the rage to push off. Referee calling for action. Both guys are real tired. There's that knee ride, and slide over to mount again. But when he slides over, he needs to pull Damkowski off them ropes, otherwise he's going to flip him over. Mounted again. Damkowski now, not turning his back this time. Blows being rained down on him. And now he's getting him in the eye and everything as well. Well, I wonder if Damkowski decided not to turn because... The day, oh, there you go. I was going to say... Oh, oh! Beautiful work! I said he has to explode. And that's what he did. He was lulling Vitenko on a false sense of security, I think. Oh, big right hand. And this is what champions are made of. Remarkably impressed with Demkowski's resilience in this fight. Oh, nice oh. knee. That I rocked mean, ahead of Patenko. Patenko's wide eyes thinking, what do I have to do at this point? Yeah, Damkowski is trying to pick his shots wisely. He's not throwing a nice kick. Nice, yeah. He's not throwing just to put the tank off. He's trying to throw to score points and to hurt him. And especially when you're this tired in the championship rounds, it's the best idea. Oh! Damkowski, quite an unorthodox nice fighter too. Yeah, I like his angles. His angles are great. I love his low stance as well. Can't help but feel he's stalking his opponents at all times. 
A little more urgency now, though. See, they're, move, they're, move, the they're moving like that from Damkowski. It's like, you know, am I going to throw an uppercut? Am I going to throw overhand? Am I going to throw left hook? It's just the angles that he's thrown them from it. Nice crawl. He <laughs> wisely escapes there. Well, Patenko's going to get tired with all his shots. But to be honest, Damkowski needs to do something a little bit better than this. Although he's fighting great. He needs a little bit more. Yeah, he needs a bit more. They, they, there's only one and a half rounds left to go. When he's down on the scorecard, but you saw him there, he bent down and took a deep breath. He's tired. Yeah. To fight this style when he's this tired is remarkable as well. Nice body kick. But Patenko still ahead on the scorecard and will continue to be so unless Damkowski does something miraculous at this point. Thirty seconds. Oh, nice overcut, just missing the mark. If he gets a takedown now, Patenko. Oh, beautiful work. He's just solidifying his winning streak right now. I wonder whether a takedown this late in the round would actually help secure the round. Only the judges will know at this point. Oh, and he goes for the. Bar. You go, oh, we missed it. Right on the bell. Well, this takes us to the fifth and final. Blood coming from the ear of Fatenko. And as we know, a lot of blood coming from the eye of Damkowski. Doctor already working on that cut. You know, you can just... You can just hear the cornerman saying, five more minutes, that's all it is, one more round, five more minutes. But I tell you what, five minutes after doing four rounds is a long time. And you can see the look on Damkowski's face, incredible. <laughs> How he's able to stand and keep fighting is beyond me. He looks like a zombie on his feet right now. Well, Damkowski has to stick and move, but when he sticks, he has to hit hard, he has to hit clean, and he has to make the points count. Well, on the other hand, Patenko has to get the takedown. And as we've seen, he can control Damkowski quite easy on the ground. Great what a show clash, sure. There. Honestly, these guys are awesome. Well, here we go, fifth and final round. Jumping knee straight away from Damkowski. Big risk, separates in time. That could have been very costly. He wouldn't want to be on his back from the beginning of the round there. He knows he's got to knock the tank out here. Oh, quite a sprawl there, but the tank still got a leg. Single. And there's the takedown. That's a good score for Patenko. Damkowski knows he has to get up from this. <laughs> Referee Marco Brunson calling for action, telling Butenko not to just lay there. <laughs> yeah, the referee wants action. It is for the title. Botenko's tired. I wouldn't be surprised if both guys collapse after this round. You normally find that when a fight's going ahead, they will pull everything out the bag, but as soon as they know the fight's over, that's it. They will bend over double, they will fall to the floor. But that's what a true fighter does. As long as the fight's going, they keep going. It's that adrenaline dump, and once it's out, it's out of your control. At that point, your body weakens and you collapse. It's either you collapse in relief and disappointment, whatever it may be, all of these different avalanche of emotions. Oh, that nice kick back. Feel. Didn't work though. Normally you kick your opponent back like that and get back to your feet. Tenko is just straight back on top of him. Oh, nice pass again. He's got a beautiful guard pass. Well done, Kossi, done well. He's managed to hook a leg in. Half guard. 
Tank will be happy with the half guard though. He's still throws some big shots down. Tenko knows he has to keep moving in top position. Referee has already called action a few times. Back to full guard. Oh. Just constant movement now from Patenko. Yeah, whatever it costs at this point, just so he can keep his position. Oh, posturing up at this point. They're trying to go for a triangle, Damkowski. Both guys really tight, but look at the cut over the right eye. I was just about to say, Ian, you can see the blood glimmering. You can see every time he turns, you can see the splatter of blood coming off his hair. It's quite something to watch this sort of violence up close. Back to its feet. Interesting decision there. Well, Dankowski has to make this work in 1 minute 45. The crowd, you can tell they're cheering him on. They want him to do this. He's covering up his, his eye, look. He's covering up the cut. He doesn't want it hit. But it's also taken away his right hand from him at this point. He's backing Butenko up every time he strikes with him. There's only 80 seconds to go here. He needs to really put everything into this. As he said, Ian, the time to collapse will be after the fight, but until then, keep nice at it. Nice body kick there from Damkowski. Butenko, on the other hand, is backing oh, up. Oh, he caught the leg, leg. but did catch his face as well. He drives him back, gets the body lock. Butenko just a powerhouse. Potenko is just relentless with these takedowns. And another slap. Well, that has just secured the championship title, I feel. I'd say that is the final 45 nail seconds coffin. left, and I don't see this going any other way right now. Mounted. Well, this is really something here. Some 30 seconds to go. Oh, and Butenko's corner now seems to be celebrating already. They're like, just finish this off. It's nearly over. Butenko is just riding the body of Damkowski. He knows he's literally Lord vicious. Uppercut seconds under the away armpit. from being champion. He's still trying to go for a submission. Let's go there. And that's it. The what final bell. A war. Awesome fight, five rounds of pure MMA. And like we said, both guys are exhausted. Well, that was quite something, ladies and gentlemen. Bloody regulated violence at its finest. Temkowski still able to find a smile there. I know both fighters on their knees, they embrace each other and collapse on the ground. They know they just put on a show, they know they just did it. That's quite something. While Demkowski is still as exciting as he was in his heyday, it appears Alexander Butenko did just enough to claim victory. We'll leave it to our MC and my colleague Ian Freeman to give us the decision for the main event of the evening.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard for a unanimous decision in favor of your winner and L1 Challenge lightweight champion, Alexander Putenko! <laughs> Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The new M1 Global lightweight champion, Alexander Butenko, being awarded the title by M1 Global president, Vadim Finkelstein. And while I would like to say goodbye to you now, ladies and gentlemen, we still have one more fight, a post limb between Adrian Perez and Azerbaijan's Etigad Atahasiv. Rövshan Asano, Kalip ve Mükafatçıya, Mevlu Bidvançıya, hediyeleri takdim edin Rövshan Mellim. Azerbaijan EMA Federasyası Prezidenti, Avrupa EMA Asasasının Vice Prezidenti, Galip ve Mevlu Bidvançıya. Pozdravlayın Pabitiyle. Alkışlar Rıza Aziz Dostlar.